When I was growing up in Appalachia, I learned to cook from Granny and my grandmothers. Um, Granny Gazzy more so than my Mama Marie because she died when I was pretty young, but I do remember the foods that she cooked for me. She was my babysitter, so I spent a lot of time with her. Anyway, I was really interested in cooking. Now, there's a couple of reasons why. I was a really picky eater, so I don't think it was necessarily that I loved food. I think it was fun to, to play, to gom, as my granny would say, mess and gom in the kitchen. You know, I love to, to ha make cookies and have flour and make a mess, you know, like you're creating something. But I think more than that, I really appreciated, even at a young age, that granny fed us, you know, that that was her job, like that she, she took time to make sure that we had good meals. She got excited about something that she thought that we would enjoy. She got excited about cooking our favorite foods, you know, especially about pleasing Pap. Also, Pap was a good cook. He cooked, so it wasn't just granny. Pap would cook. Sometimes he cooked supper. He'd cook breakfast. He was just a, he was a good cook, too. It's funny, it reminds me, I think my girls have grown up like that, too, in a home where food is, um, it's not necessarily like it's a fancy, ritzy, like a foodie type person, but just eating good food and, and providing food for your family. When Corey was probably, I don't know, maybe she was about three years old, she told me she, uh, one day, she said, Mama, when I grow up, I want to be a cooker. She called it a cooker. And I said, you do? Well, why do you want to be a cooker? And she said, because it makes people happy. So I think even then, she had begun to realize that, there, hey, there's something to this cooking food nourishment, nourishment for our bodies, you know, for your family, and then serving it to them. So anyway, at a, at a pretty young age, I began to want to cook, and Granny would let me help her do stuff, but pretty soon, she just let me, she'd let me do it, whatever I wanted to do, she'd let me do it myself, you know, even if it was a complicated recipe, I think I made cream puffs one time, and they didn't work out real good, because I was probably too young to understand how it actually worked. But one of the first things that she taught me to make and just turned me loose with, and then from then on, I could make it whenever I wanted it, or I would make it to help her if, if she wanted me to, you know, I could do it completely on my own was what she called a cheesecake. Well, I was an adult before I realized most cheesecakes are, are kind of complicated and you bake them in the oven. You know, this is like a no-bake cheesecake. And it's the simplest recipe ever. And um, a recent article that I someone was talking to me about that they were writing, and they were asking me questions, got me to thinking about how, and of course this is not just Appalachia, people all over the world cook out of their pantry, but it really got me to thinking about that, about those tried and true recipes that are just, you kind of always have the stuff on hand, and then you go to your pantry and you pull them out, and that's how you cook, you know, that's, that's the things that you use. Maybe it's stuff you put up uh, from the previous year's garden, or maybe it's stuff that you you know you don't garden, but you just make sure you always have these staples in your house. Well, this recipe, this little quick dessert, is one like that. It's kind of like stuff that I would always have on hand, as did Granny. So it was easy. If somebody was gonna, uh, maybe somebody invited you at the last minute to come over to their house and you wanted to take something, or all of a sudden company showed up and you've got to feed them, or maybe you know there's a church. Um, function, a dinner on the grounds, or just a Sunday night supper after church or something like that, and you know that you need to take something, but gosh, you just don't have much time. Well, this is literally the easiest dessert ever, and you've probably, you're probably already familiar with it, but um, today I was going to show you how to make it. So Granny's no bake Cheesecake, and there's so many variations out there. If you do a Google, you'll find uh, all kinds of different ones. I've had people tell me they put bananas in theirs. Uh, some people do this, uh, it's, it's a no-bake cheesecake, but it's a different recipe, so it's got different things in it. Uh, it uses cream and like confectioner sugar and stuff like that, but Granny's is so simple. Literally, all it uses is an 8-ounce uh, block of cream cheese, a third a cup of lemon juice, and you can use fresh lemon juice, or if you only have the store-bought, you know, in your pantry, you can use that, a teaspoon of vanilla, and a can of sweetened condensed milk. That's where the sweet part comes in. So you basically mix all that together, which is what we're going to do right now in a minute, and then you pour it into your pie shell. Granny always usually would just buy a graham cracker pie shell. Today I've just made my own. Typically I buy them too. I always like have one or two in the, in the uh, pantry so that if I, I decide I need to make this, I have it on hand. But I do like a good homemade uh, graham cracker crust too. So that's what I've done today and put it in my spring form pan. Anyway, but now I'm going to show you how to put it all together. So I've got my cream cheese in the mixer, and I'm going to let it mix for a few minutes. Of course, it works better if you uh, set the cream cheese out and let it kind of come to room temperature. I'd like to say that I always do that, but I don't because sometimes I just decide I'm going to make it, and then I get it out. You can soften it. 
uh, in the microwave for like five seconds not very long because you before you know it, it'll just go to liquid you know and be a mess but or you could like uh, put it near a stove i've done that before laid it kind of before uh, beside where i'm cooking so that heat kind of speeds up the softening process or you can just put it in there and let your mixer keep going until it gets softened so i start out with just the cream cheese and let it mix for a few minutes <laughs> You can stop and kind of scrape down the bowl, especially if you didn't let it th uh, come to room temperature like how I did and give it another attempt to kind of get creamy. So I'll scrape down the bowl and then we'll go again. Okay, now I'm gonna scrape down the bowl one more time. Once you put the other ingredients in, then it really begins to get creamy for you. And then I'm gonna add my sweetened condensed milk. See, it's beginning to get really creamy now. I'm gonna scrape down the sides again, make sure all the cream cheese is, really has an opportunity to incorporate. I'm gonna add a part of a cup of lemon juice and a teaspoon of vanilla and mix again. I'm gonna scrape down one more time and then I'm just gonna let it mix until it's completely mixed in and creamy and you don't see any more lumps of the cream cheese. Usually just about two to three minutes is all it takes. Maybe on your high speed. And then you'll be ready to pour it into the pie shell. Once the cream cheese mixture is finished mixing, then you'll just pour it into your pie shell. Like I said today, I've made one in my springform pan out of graham crackers, butter, and sugar. I always like to bake mine, whether I make it this way or if I make it just in a store-bought graham cracker crust, I like to bake it for a few minutes. That helps the, since this is a pie that stays in the refrigerator, sometimes the crust can get soggy. So baking it prior to that helps it retain more of its crunchiness, more of the firmness that it has when it's first made. So I like to do that. I've already done that. Usually if you buy a graham cracker crumb crust somewhere on there, it'll tell you like, if you want to bake it, do so and so. It'll tell you, give you directions. But usually it's about like 375 or something like that for five to six minutes. Sometimes uh, with the store-bought ones especially, I will take an egg white and brush all over the inside of it, and that also helps it retain more of the crunchiness. Of course, if you don't like crunchiness, you don't even need to, to worry about that. But now that I've got the mixture in there, I'm going to put this in the refrigerator until it firms up, and then later in the day, it'll be ready to eat. So the cheesecake's had time to firm up in the refrigerator. I just got it out. We're about to eat supper, so this will be a good dessert for us. I'll give you a close-up look there so you can see how it turns out. If you were looking for something to put on top, a really common topping is like a cherry pie filling. You could use fresh fruit, blueberries and strawberries would be especially pretty on it. You could use whipped cream. I did like what Granny would do when I was little and I used some leftover. I kept some graham cracker crumbs and I sprinkled them on top. Honestly, most of the time or all the times when I make it, I don't ever put a topping on it. We just eat it as is and we don't have any kind of topping on it. But I shared while it was uh, firming up in the refrigerator, I had to call Granny about something. So I shared with her that I was going to do a video. And I said, where did you learn how to make that no-bake cheesecake, you know? I totally thought that she was going to say, <clears throat> excuse me, that she learned how to make it at church from someone at church. But I was so glad I asked her because she said, 
her mother, Gazzy, and her sister, Faye, she said Faye and mother was crazy about that cheesecake, and they used to make it every Sunday. And I was so glad that that, to know that that's where she learned how to make it was from them. Now, I used to eat Sunday dinner at Granny Gazzy's every Sunday my whole life when I was young, you know, before she passed away. And I don't really remember her ever having cheesecake. The things that stood out in my mind were her chocolate cake and her applesauce cake, both really, really good. Maybe I just don't remember the cheesecake, or maybe by the time I come along, she'd started making something else, you know, and... and uh, it, the cheesecake was more when Granny was a young girl. Either way, it's really good if you want to give it a try. And you probably have already tried it because it's a really common recipe. I hope you'll leave a comment and share, you know, if you do make it, do you, is it a different variation? Like I was saying, some people put bananas in it and different things like that. Or share your favorite go-to recipe that, or dessert recipe that's really easy. Like if you're in a hurry, if you need to go somewhere or, you, or a company comes that you wasn't expecting, what's your go-to dessert recipe for times like that? But mostly, I just hope you'll drop back by often as I celebrate Appalachia.